Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. I deeply appreciate it. It's been a little bit. I just took a little road trip to Michigan to uh, do a guest spot. And it was awesome. Got to see a good friend of mine, military man as well. Uh, I got to hang out, do some tattoos. Uh, had to cut my trip a little short. I had to rush home due to a death in the family. And it's sad. And we're hanging in there. We're doing what we can do. But I want to let you all know that you need to... Get those physicals, get checked out, make sure your health is in good, solid state, and to make sure you have things taken care of. I know it sucks to say stuff like that, but you have to. You got to look at everything in the big picture for your family's sake, so make sure you take care of those things. But let's jump ahead a little bit here and talk a little bit about... Yeah, road trip, Michigan. Freaking awesome. Had a great time. I got to hang out with a buddy of mine, a former military friend, brother, a great guy and everything. And on my road trip, I got to, I have a hard copy of it. So you can't read a book while you're driving. So I decided to audio book it. Andy Jacobson phenomenal author great books area 51 uh the uncensored uh top secret uh military stuff she put out phenomenal great read so far i am just blown away all the information she got a hold of the way she researched for this book it is badass it, they talk she talks about a lot of cool shit Area 51, the way it came about, the some of the the uh, top secret, uh, uh, I would say the you know the planes, the some of the other stuff that happened along with you know nuclear testing and shit like that. So if you guys get a chance to read that book. Definitely check it out because it's awesome, too. I've been, you know, on this little kick for reading here and there. And, you know, I'm a nerd, so I read just about anything and everything. I watch a lot of documentaries. I watch a lot of shock docs, you know, things like that. Listen to a lot of other podcasters and try and follow suit and whatnot. But, yeah, Andy Jacobson's books are badass. Another friend of mine, uh, I, could, I, I consider him a friend. We talk a little bit uh, via uh, emails and chat here and there. Uh, looking to talk to him soon. But he just got his first American published book. Uh, he's an author. He's awesome. Uh, Fred Anderson's uh, Northern Lights, High Strangeness in Sweden. Great book. You pick it up on Amazon. Um it is awesome. A lot of cool stories from Sweden. Because Sweden doesn't really put out much. I haven't really heard many things from Sweden as it comes to UFOs, UAPs, you know, things like that. But Fred dove deep into some stories and and researched and investigated. And he put together a very well-written book and great information um everything from the uaps frogmen um mythical things so if you get a chance grab his book too so many congratulations fred on your book and i look forward to talking to you soon my friend seriously so let me dive into a little bit here man so michigan michigan and i wasn't far from a little town called Dexter. And if you guys like me know some things, Dexter had a little incident back in 1966, March 20th, 1966. And it was uh it made national news. It was all over. It was investigated. 
I was super excited to be back up there. And, you know, I didn't get my chance to go and take a peek at things and take some pictures, but watched a few things, read a few things. But, yeah, man, uh, what did it say here? Um, uh, 19... 66 uh dexter michigan national news uh reports of strange lights in the sky flying saucers and then according to the government they discredited it and all that crap but what it comes down to is um colored lights uh you know were hovering over the wooded section of this farm um and it caught the attention of Frank Manor and his son, Ronald. And not only just them, you know, these guys, they walked towards this uh, strange object. And, uh, and then, you know, Mr. Manor, Frank, he reported this incident to the police. And not only did he report it, you know, but the, the report states that Frank and his son, Ronald, and plus an additional 40 to 60 other uh, individuals, including including 12 police officers, saw the hovering over the swamp about 1,500 feet away, um, a brown luminous like car size. They, they say it possibly looked like, like a football odd, odd shaped and whatnot. Um, the lights blinked and uh, reappeared instantly across the swamp. The whole object lit up with a uh, yellowish glow. One point also rose up to about 1,500 feet and appeared in the distance. The object seemed to respond by flying away at high speed directly over the witnesses with a whistling sound like a rifle bullet ricocheting. You know, but man, could you imagine that? Like, just being out in the middle of nowhere. Dexter is a small section. It's you know up in that area, a lot of farmland. Uh, you know, a lot of great places up there. You've got Jiffy, yeah, man, Jiffy corn, you know, and stuff like that. And it's just like forty to fifty. 40 to 60 people see this, okay? 12 police officers, credible people. I mean, you know, like, what the fudge, you know? And then the government goes and uh, says, yeah, whatever. And it's just like, it's bull crap, man. Like, we need to really understand. I mean, I guess we can understand, you know, the government doesn't really want us to know a whole lot. I get, you know, mass hysteria. You know, look how people react. We, we are, we're ready, man. We are fucking ready. We want to know what the hell. There's so much new information, you know, out there coming about now. We just, a few months ago, we just had uh, Mr. Grush, former major Air Force intelligence operator whose job was to look into things we have commander david fravor a pilot ryan graves a pilot these people have seen these things they have eyewitness testimony at the congressional hearings in congress on this this stuff you know so it's just like these ufo hearings it's time to let us the people know like what the fuck is going on like what do we got to worry about do we have to worry you know they've been out there so i mean it's just one of those things so i'm looking here and it says uh scores of credible eyewitnesses also saw the flying objects that night uh the dexter sighting was just one of many in southeast michigan for two weeks in March of 1966. However, the Dexter incident drew national attention and was a turning point that thrust UFOs into the public spotlight, man. But 
I just, you know, so they bring in, I guess, the Air Force. Uh, the Air Force was in charge of investigating, uh, you know, these UAPs, UFOs, under their initiative, Project Blue Book. Yes, Project Blue Book. Um, uh, the Air Force sent in uh, Dr. Alan Hynek to Dexter to investigate the matter. For Project Blue Book, Hynek arrived in Dexter and found what he later describes as near hysteria. After two days of investigation... On March 25th, Heidnick announced a press conference in Detroit that the UFOs had been identified. He declared the phenomenon swamp gas. Fucking swamp gas. You have all these eyewitnesses, 40 to 60, 12 police officers. There's no way that this shit was fucking swamp gas, man. You know, and it's just like, it's crazy. I mean, seriously, like fucking swamp gas. Uh, and the answer that caused the uh, outcry from my witnesses and others across the country and swamp gas my ass, you know, but um, it's, you know, that's what it come down to. And it's just like, what the frig, man? Um, uh, let's see here. What else do they say? They report say uh, the UFOs were spotted around 830 p.m. The sunset that day was 647 p.m. Uh, meaning it, it had to have been dark, you know, when the manor saw the object. Uh, I see here it is also the Air Force, uh, blah, 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 blah. I do believe the Air Force ex explanation of swamp gas was a major con contributing factor for the way the public treated the manners, uh, says this, this writer. And so... Let's see, there's, I'm just kind of clicking and pointing here, guys, so bear with me as we do this. But, so the f the fallout of this situation in Dexter, okay, the real impact of the Dexter incident was in the nationals, national attention it received. Uh, the ludicrous response by the Air Force dismissing such a uh, fantastic event from scores of credible witnesses as swamp gas drew national outrage. Uh, respected newsman Walter Cronkite and the Congressman General Ford, ex-president uh, General Ford, uh, called for an investigation summarizing uh, in the, the, the Condon report. But I printed off this uh th this is uh um the high uh, report blue book uh the air force has asked me to make a statement on my findings to date this i am happy to do provide it is clearly understood that my statement will render to the two principal events as reported to me, the event near Dexter, Michigan on March 20th and the similar one in Hilldale, Michigan on March 21st. It does not cover the hundreds of unexplained reports as opposed to the thousands of unexplained cases made not only to Project Blue Book, but those from other countries. Over the past several years, as described in recent books and articles, I have not investigated those such as the one near Dexter. Uh, I'm sorry, e uh, looks like Easter, New Hampshire, and the and the three in western states last year. Uh, nor the the typing on these things is horrendous because it's so old, this blue book shit that you try and get offline, but... Basically, what it's doing is, um, let's see here. We know a very great deal more about the physical world in 1966 than we did in 1866. But by the same token, the people in the year 2066 may regard us as very incomplete in our scientific knowledge. 
So, I mean, he was talking about the future and shit like that. But, that, come on, man. Fucking swamp gas. I mean, you got all those eyewitnesses. You got 12 police officers, you know. I just felt bad for this gentleman, you know, Mr. Manor, Frank, because these people looked at him almost like he was a fucking kook afterwards, you know. And But apparently they just ended up laying low and never, ever again, you know, really talking about this and stuff like that. It's just sad, you know. Nowadays, I mean, we have all this technology, these cell phones and whatnot. And that's that's another thing, too, is it gets me. The cameras on these phones are phenomenal, depending on the type of product that you're using, Samsung, iPhone, you know, whatnot. But I mean, you can get very good, clear images. And yet a lot of the stuff that we see is not very clear. It's out of focus i mean i understand it's hard to really zoom in on something that's at a far distance but there has got to be some serious proof out there and i guarantee guarantee all the satellite images that we have looking down and looking out there's there's shit in them there's got to be shit in them i'm telling you man there's got to be shit but, you know, I'm a believer. I don't believe we are the only ones out here in the universe of all these planets and whatnot. And I do believe, you know, we've got visitors. We've got people. We've got aliens looking at us, coming to us, you know, doing things. The shit's been going on for years. You know, we had our whistleblowers, apparently, you know, we have in possession, so they say, UAPs, non-biologicals, let's see them. Let's, it's, it's time to release this information. I am big fans of Corbell and Knapp, and these guys are two amazing journalists who really dive deep into this shit and are really pushing hard for the government to let this shit out it's time so I, I i think so but i'm just man i'm just excited i'm ready man you know i'm you know i'm almost 50 another year or so i'll be 50 i don't want to die in my lifetime not knowing what the fuck is out there you know i'm sure there's people out there too are ready you know for this shit there's tons of people who are diehard fans of UO, UFOs, UAPs, aliens, the knowledge, and all the shit that's out there, you know? I mean, it's crazy. And I believe that there have been people abducted. I mean, th these aliens want to know what we are, what we're about, you know? And I'm sure shit has been done, and I believe in this stuff, and I believe certain stories, you know? I just am ready to know more. And I'm sure you guys are as well, right? I mean, we sit around and we're like, what the fuck? You know, and it's just like, come on, man. Let's let's know. We need to know. We're ready to know. You want to know. I want to know. You know, let's break it. You know, let's do the macho man. Yeah. Snap into an alien. Let's do that shit. You know what I'm talking about? But, man, there's, man, it's just mind-blowing. So, but... I'm been off my schedule a little bit with you guys and everything that has been happening personally and the traveling and all, but I'm back. I'm working strong. I've been reaching out to people for more interviews and whatnot and have some stuff lined up, some exciting things that will be happening here in the next month or so. I'm really looking forward to those. I cannot wait my goal is to just bs with you guys that's what my channel's about that's what my show's about it's just bs you know every everyday bullshit it does it's you know i'm a nerd i love sci-fi comic books art history ufos bigfoot skunk ape all the weird 
creatures of the night, vampires, whatnot, you know. But I've, I've got some things lined up, and I hope you guys continue to tune in, continue to listen. Give me that thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. Give me that five-star rating on your Spotify, your iTunes, you know. Help push me to that higher level that I need to be for my podcast, for all this and i just you know i want to thank everybody who does follow me now and tunes in i am working harder on more research on certain things but as you know i you know i i love history as well and i mean it's not just going to be all about one thing and you know i i will jump around you know and there's just so much cool shit going on in the world right now I'm super excited about. I am a big nerd when it comes to World War II. I love World War II history. Uh, Annie Jacobson also put out a great book, Operation Paperclip. I mean, if you guys get a chance to read this fucking book, do it. It is amazing. I am blown away by this information. I... It talks about everything. So, you know, the allies coming in from the east and, you know, you have the Russians coming in for the west and we're crushing down on Berlin and Hitler's in his bunker. And on our way to Berlin, man, we're grabbing and sucking up all these fucking Nazi scientists and taking them in and interrogating left and right and Everything from weapons of mass destruction to gases, poisonous gases, the shit that they did on people, everything. Their, the, the rocket situation, everything, how they brought these guys to the states, gave them fucking jobs, and then boom, we've got NASA. So, but yeah, man, read into that shit. It's awesome. Um, you know, I try not to fall down into too many rabbit holes, but there's just so much cool shit out there to constantly get deep into and to keep pushing and looking at other things. As I said before, you know, great books, Annie Jacobson, Area 51, her Operation Paperclip, phenomenal. And you got to definitely check out my buddy Fred Anderson. His Northern Lights, High Strangeness in Sweden, great book. So many really cool stories coming from Sweden. Fred did it. Like I said, Fred did a phenomenal job on this book. And I have many congratulations again to him on it being published and all that good stuff. But as I wind down on this, this episode, it's a shorter one. I've got to say that I deeply appreciate everybody and hug your loved ones tell them that you love them make sure you take care of yourself mentally physically emotionally never go to bed mad okay and just know that you're not alone in anything there's always somebody out there to give you help assistance whatever and just Keep pushing, man. Just keep pushing. Many, many years I wanted to do this. For many years I wanted to do this podcast stuff. And I just didn't have the courage. I didn't have... I don't... I guess in some sense I was scared. What am I going to talk about? You know, who who's going to listen to me? But you'd be surprised. You know, just put your heart into it like I do. I'm not the best You know, I say a lot of ums and uhs and buts. That's me. That's who I am. I'm just almost a 49-year-old guy with a podcast who owns a tattoo studio in Florida. Wife, kids, you know, and here I am pushing hard, hoping you guys listen and enjoy what I'm putting out. So, like I said, please subscribe to the channel. Help a brother out. Give me a five-star rating. And let's continue this journey. So I am going to shorten this here right now. 
and this little cast. But I will be back with some new stuff. Stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for all your love and support. And I will talk to you guys soon. Peace.